Hey, this is Mr. Malat, reading teacher at Woodbury. I'll be reading Bat in the Waiting Game, chapters one and two. Chapter one, Skunk Kits. Maybe, Bat thought, there was something better in the world than cradling a sleepy, just-fed baby skunk in your arms, but at this moment, it didn't seem likely. Bat was sitting in his beanbag chair, having just put down the tiny, nearly empty bottle of formula in Bat's hand, licking his fine, soft whiskers with a tiny pink tongue and then yawning widely to reveal two rows of new white teeth was a six-week-old six week old skunk kit named Thor. After licking his whiskers clean, Thor curled up into a ball in Bat's hand, and Bat held the tiny creature close to his chest, carefully settling into his beanbag, watching as Thor fell into his contented sleep. It had been one week since Bat's mother had agreed that the family could continue caring for the skunk kit until he was old enough to be released into the wild, and Bat could sit still barely believe his good luck. With a soft, warm weight of Thor in his hands, Bat looked around his room. He sat across from his window. The bamboo shade rolled all the way up. The windows, the windows were half open, and a pleasant breeze blew in. It was springtime, and the air was beginning to feel warm. Bat's bed was neatly made, just the way he liked it, with the blue sheet and red and blue plaid quilt tucked in tight so that he climbed in at night, he would feel like he was slip, slipping into a cocoon. A matching red and blue pla plaid quilt peeked out from the trundle underneath Bat's bed. There was a honey brown dresser where Bat kept his clothes neatly sorted, just how he liked them, and beside it was Bat's bookshelf where he kept all his important things, including his favorite possession, his animal encyclopedia. And there, right next to the animal encyclopedia, was something new. From where Bat sat the, sat, the new thing looked like an oddly shaped lump of clay, but Bat had spent enough time holding it and examining it from all angles to know exactly that it was art. It was a sculpture of a skunk kit, molded out of gray clay, with eyes and a nose and a mouth carved into it, and on the bottom the words, from Israel carved into it. When Israel had first handed it to Bat last Monday at school, it had taken Bat a moment to figure out exactly what he was holding. It's a skunk kit! Israel said. I made it in my mom's studio. She fired it in her kiln and everything, so this way when you're not at home with Thor, you can still have a skunk with you. You know, you can carry it around, like in your pocket or something. Bat had rubbed his thumb down the smooth, shiny black clay lump. It didn't look much like a skunk kit, but its pleasant weight felt good in his hand, and when he had flipped it over to find the words, from Israel, on the bottom, a warm, good feeling spread through his chest and up his neck. A friend had given him a gift, and even if it didn't look much like a real baby skunk now nestled in his hand, it definitely deserved a place on his bookshelf, along with his, the other important things. Chapter 2. Dinner Conversation Setting the table was one of Bat's jobs, but that evening placing three plates, three cups, and three forks, and three placemats, he felt very certain that his sister, Janny, should have this job instead. For one thing, he refused to let Bat carry Thor while he set the table. She refused to let Bat carry Thor while he set the table, excuse me. He tucked it in, he's tucked into his sling, Janny, Bat argued. Lawrence, the veterinary technician who worked with Mom, had made the sling so that Bat could safely carry Thor around. He's not anywhere near your plate and fork and cup. Janie just shook her head and crossed her arms. It's not sanitary, she said. You'd be violating like three different health code regulations. Her logic wasn't logical, but Bat screwed up, screwed his mouth up tight and breathed in deeply through his nose. One of Mom's conditions for raising the skunk kit was no family disharmony, which meant that Bat wasn't, wasn't supposed to be stubborn about skunk stuff like setting the table with the skunk in his sling. So he turned around and headed back to his room where he lifted the sling from where it hung around his neck and tucked in, sleeping, Thorn still inside, into the enclosure, a repurposed dog crate. At least Mom had finally agreed to let Thor sleep in Bat's room. That was something. He didn't mean to slam the dishes down on the table, not really, and probably Janny wouldn't even notice that he put her fork up, upside down instead of right side up, but she did notice a few months later when Bat filled Mom's cup and his own cup with lemonade and Janny's cup with plain water. Thank you, Bat, she said with a big smile. Sugar isn't very good for my voice before an important audition. And then she took a big gulp of the water like it was the best thing she had ever tasted. Are you nervous? asked Mom, spooning enchiladas into each of their three plates. 
The hot melted cheese stretched into long strings as the enchiladas traveled from the serving dish to the plates. No, said Janny. Well, maybe a little. Fat waited for Mom to cut his enchilada into pieces. He liked the taste of enchiladas, but the texture of the cheese sometimes grossed him out a little. It was better when Mom cut it into little cubes for him. Bat, aren't you old enough to cut your own food? Janny asked. Yes, Bat answered. But Mom does it better. Well, you'll never get good at it unless you practice, Janny said. Bat didn't like the tone of her voice, kind of like a know-it-all. Sometimes even practicing at something doesn't mean you'll ever get good at it, he said. Like you and singing. Bat, said Mom in her low, warning voice. Bat shrugged. If Janny was going to be mean, he could be mean, too, even though he secretly thought that Janny had a beautiful singing voice. They were quite a few... They were quiet for a few minutes, just their forks scraping against plates and the clink of their cups being set back down. So you're all set on auditioning for the Queen? Mom asked. Janny nodded. It's the best part, she said. There's the most room for artistic creativity. Janny had been talking about auditioning for her school's play for weeks now. They were going to perform Alice in Wonderland during the last week of school, and the audition was just in a few days. I'm glad the audition is on Monday, Bat said, stabbing at the enchilada cube with his fork. Mom smiled. That's nice of you, Bat. Then Janny can stop talking about, all it, stop talking about it all the time. Bat popped the, the enchilada cube into his mouth. Delicious. I don't talk about the audition nearly as much as you talk about Thor, Janie said. How much can anyone say about an audition, Bat said. How much can anyone say about a skunk, Janie said. Well, said Bat, did you know that skunks sometimes attack beehives because they like to eat honeybees, and that a wild skunk usually only lives about three years, but peck skunks can live up to ten? Or how about this? Skunks can survive a snake bite, and skunks aren't fast, and they have bad eyesight, and... Bat had a lot more he could have said, but Mom interrupted. How about this, she said. How about the two, what do the two of you have to say about dessert? Dessert was something that was easy to agree on. Bat thought happy, happily as mom served him one of the still warm brownies that Jenny had made that afternoon. So those were chapters one and two. Uh, chapter three is entitled Parts, and maybe I'll be reading it for you tomorrow, or maybe somebody else. We'll see. Thanks for listening.